Now I'm going to go more in depth onto how to construct a probability table. So we have our basic setup here. We're drawing cards from a deck and flipping a balanced coin. So we know that if we're flipping a coin, the chance of heads or tails is 50-50. So the probability that it lands on heads is one half. The probability that it lands on tails is also one half. And if we're drawing cards from a deck of cards, we know that there are the same number of red cards as there are black cards. So again, the chance is 50-50. There's a one-half probability of drawing a red card and a one-half probability of drawing a black card. Our total of everything is 1 in this bottom corner here because the probability of flipping a coin and having it land on heads or tails is one. It has to happen. And the probability of drawing either a red card or a black card is one because that has to happen when you draw a card. Now we want to know what about these four boxes in the middle. This red question mark is the probability of drawing a red card and this symbol means intersection or and flipping the coin and landing on heads since flipping the coin has nothing to do with the cards you're drawing these are independent events and we can write this probability as the probability of drawing a red card times the probability of the coin landing on heads. So this is equal to one half times one half, which is one fourth. So that's what goes here. That's the probability of landing on heads and drawing a red card. We can do the same exact thing for each of these other three boxes. Uh, but in this case, because all of our probabilities are one half around these edges, we know that these four boxes will all be one fourth because we just do the same exact thing as we did down down here. So that's a simple example of how to construct one of these probability tables and it should be helpful for calculating joint and conditional probabilities. Here's another example of a probability table that's a little more complicated than the last one. Now we're looking at different majors and I just divided it into business and not business and we're looking at whether or not people have taken a stats class before so it's just yes or no. So these total numbers that I have filled in, I just chose them randomly. Um, but based on this, there's a 25% chance they haven't taken a stats class before, a 75% chance they have, there's a 20% chance they're a business major, and an 80% chance they're not. And again, this number in the bottom right always has to add up to 1 because there's a hundred percent chance that they're business or not business. So to calculate the numbers in the middle, for example this red one here, we're going to assume these are independent events, meaning they one doesn't affect the other. So if we look at the probability that someone has not taken a stats class before and that they're a business major, we can multiply the probability of each event. So the probability of no stats class before times the probability that they're a business major. So that gives us um, the probability that they have not taken a stats class is one-fourth times the probability that they're a business major one-fifth and that equals 
1 out of 20 and you can always turn these numbers into percentages and then if we look at for example uh, this one here again they're independent events so we look at the probability of yes they have taken stats before and they're not a business major and that equals the multiplying the probabilities of those events separately so the probability that they have taken stats before times the probability that they're not a business major so that gives us three-fourths probability that they have taken stats times four-fifths probability that they are not a business major and notice the fours will cancel out ones on top ones on bottom and we'll be left with three-fifths so to calculate the green and the orange numbers it's a similar process as the red and gray ones so I hope this helped